My name is Matias Herrero, and I hope uh, you're staying safe during this COVID-19 crisis. I wanted to make this video from home to talk about something that is interesting to me, and I hope that is interesting to you. And it's the subject is the 5% discount rate that is uh, widely used in our mining industry in feasibility, pre-feasibility studies, as well as preliminary economic assessment to calculate the net present value of a mineral project. This 5% discount rate uh, is used in the base case scenarios, in those discounted cash flow models, uh, even though the studies will have also a sensitivity analysis showing an 8% or 10% discount rate, the base case is typically the 5%. Now that 5% discount rate is often criticized as being low, and I wanted to find out whether that's the case. And that's the reason why I made this video, and I hope you like it. It's important to mention what is the meaning of the discount rate. The discount rate is the minimum uh, expected return that an investor would like to receive to invest in a particular asset. Now, there's two elements to it. There's the time value of money and the risk profile of the asset. So the investor will have an expectation of a return or, or a reward that will, has to be commensurate to the risk of that particular asset. Now, how do you come up with, with that rate? that is based on that risk. There's really no scientific method out there. It would generally have a lot of internally generated guess estimates. And that is why in the industry is more common or is commonly used the cost of capital of a gold producer. We look at the actual investor, which in our industry will be a gold producer acquiring gold projects. Uh, we look at their cost of capital uh, and we use that cost of capital as the actual uh, discount rate for uh, to calculate the net present value of a project. Now, why we look at the cost of capital of the actual investor to measure the risk of an asset that the investor would like to acquire? Because we assume and that the uh, that uh, the assets that are in the portfolio of that gold producer investor are. Uh, have a risk or an average risk that is very similar to the risk of the actual asset that we try to evaluate here. Um, why is that? Because gold producers will likely acquire assets that are well advanced, either feasibility, pre-feasibility, or at least have a very large resource with a well understood ore body, metallurgy, and engineering, and generally in geopolitically stable jurisdictions or jurisdiction where you can, you can build a mine. So even though our projects are unique, that's a very reasonable assumption. So the cost of capital of the ghost producer is the expectation that the shareholders and the, and the lenders, the, the, the debt holders, have with respect to the asset base or the portfolio of that gold producer. So they also expect a return based on the risk of that gold producer's portfolio. So, and if we assume that the, the gold project has a similar risk to the average risk of that portfolio, therefore we can use the cost of capital of that gold producer as a representation of the risk of the gold project that we're trying to value, and therefore use it as a discount rate to come up with an MPV of that, of that asset. Now, how do we determine the cost of capital of the gold producer? It's very simple. All gold producers are publicly traded. You can look at their balance sheets and determine what the cost of borrowing is. Therefore, you can come up with a debt cost of capital, and then you look at the, the equity by using the capital asset pricing model. You look at observable data in the market, stock price behavior and such, and you can determine what the equity cost of capital is, and then you come up with a weighted average cost of capital using the debt and the equity, and therefore you have your rate that you can use to discount the uh, cash flows in, and determine the NPV of the gold project. The next thing we need to do is we need to look at the uh, cost of capital of the investor, in this case, the gold producer. For that, we need to look at the debt cost of capital as well as the equity cost of capital and come up with a weighted average cost of capital. However, to keep things simple, we can make a very uh, reasonable assumption that uh, in the mining industry that the gold project is going to be acquired uh, by a gold producer using either cash or equity. So. This way we can get the uh, debt cost of capital outside of the discussion 
and we can just focus on the equity cost of capital. For that, we will use the capital asset pricing model, which requires three elements, one of them being the beta of the gold producers. For that, uh, remember, the beta is the ratio, that is the sensitivity of uh, the return of one particular stock to the return of the overall market, assuming the market will be, for example, a standard board 500. That ratio is the beta. In large cap gold producers, the beta of the sector is 0 0.15. Um, that shows how uncorrelated uh, gold stocks are to the overall market. The beta is very low. Some betas, for example, for are even negative for um, Berry Gold, Angola Shanti, and Polios Gold. They have negative betas. Um, that's why these assets are so attractive for uh, investors that are seeking to balance their portfolios and diversify their portfolios. Looking for stock, gold stocks is incredible. Now, uh, when the other element of the equation is the uh, risk-free interest rate. For that, I like to look at the 10-year government bond. I look at 10 years because typically um, feasibility studies, preliminary economic assessments use a 10-year life for mine in the discounted cash flow models. Therefore, I use a 10-year bond um, and I look at the yield for the last 10 years of that bond and the yield was 2.3%. Now, the Final third element will be the market rate. For that, I look at the Standard & Poor Index. You can use the ETF, uh, Vanguard, uh, Standard & Poor, which is VOO, or you can use SPI, another ETF, that they replicate the index. They have a beta one, so it's a perfect, uh, perfect representation of the index. If you look at uh, the Standard & Poor Index for the, for the last 10 years, yield at a return per year in average of 11.2%. Now, I also looked at the return in average for the index since 1926, which is the year of inception. The index started in, in, with 90 companies then, and it evolved to 500 companies today, April 2020. So if you look at the index for, for that entire period, his, historical period, the rate of return uh, per year in average was 11.8%. So using 10-year uh, look back of 11.2% is a reasonable rate. So by using those three elements into the, into the formula, the beta of 0 0.15 for large cap gold producers, the 2.3% uh, risk-free rate, and 11.2% uh, market rate, we get uh, uh, equity cost of capital using the capital asset pricing uh, model formula of 3.62%. Now, if we compare that with the 5% uh, discount rate that we're using in our PAs or feasibility studies, then the conclusion right there is that 5% is therefore not a low, no a low rate. The beta of the mid cap gold producers, which is 0.73, then the um, equity cost of capital it will be 8.84%. Now, I think here is important to mention that the uh, mid-cap producer, because of the strength of the balance sheet and because of the liquidity that exists in the market and the low interest rate environment we're in, I think the, uh, the mid-cap producer should be able to secure loans at very low interest rates. I haven't gone through all of them to see what their cost of borrowing is on their balance sheets, but I would assume that it's some sort of LIBOR plus two or three points. And I think that will give them a rate of about four or five percent, something like that, which if you weighted that with the equity cost of capital, you will most likely have a rate of, of a discount rate of a uh, weighted average cost of capital that is below the 8.84% that we're calculating with the beta. So assuming that we get a lower rate, I don't know what that rate is, but I think it will probably be comparable to the 5% that we're using in our MPV calculations. Uh, if not that, then it will probably be a 6% or in that neighborhood. I don't think 8.84% will be a reasonable rate then to use in our MPV calculation. Now, if we do an average of, simple average of the mid cap and large cap uh, betas, we have a beta 
or average of 0.5, and that gives us a cost of capital, equity cost of capital, 6.79%. Again, it's higher than the 5% that we're using in our, in our calculation of our MPVs, but uh, again, if you weight that with the cost of borrowing that the mid cap and large cap producer with the strong balance sheet and the low price uh, interest rate environment, I'm sure that 6.79% will likely be lower. And uh, therefore, the 5% doesn't seem to be an unreasonable rate for me. In any event, I think it's fair to include in the feasibility studies and PAs, a sensitivity analysis uh, to see the uh, behavior of the MPV to a discount rate of about six, seven, or eight percent. I think using a 10% discount rate is probably uh, unfair, but uh, I think it's proven to include a sensitivity analysis. Anyway, I hope you like my video.